This particular presentation is called The New Way to Start a Speech Therapy Private Practice. When I was first getting started as an SLP and I kind of closed my eyes and I thought about what a private practice was and what it looked like, I had this vision of like a brick and mortar private practice, right? With a waiting room and an aquarium <laughs> and like toys in the corner, right? In a parking lot and a, a secretary who was checking people in and a bustling office with lots of therapists and all, all of the treatment materials and assessments that you could ever dream of, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's kind of like the stereotypical um, idea of what private practice is. And so when people are first thinking about getting started, they have that vision. And a lot of people don't realize that private practices don't start that way, right? They start off or they can start off a lot simpler and that that maybe is something that you work up to, right? And so the old way to start a private practice is to quit your job and then start a private practice. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually start your private practice on the side of your job and to do it part-time. People, you know, get so nervous about letting go of steady pay and benefits. And the good thing is, is that you don't have to do it that way, right? It's pretty risky to quit your job and then start a private practice. It is much less risky to start seeing private clients on the side of your job, right? One of the reasons why this is, is because if you start seeing private clients just again on the side, and by that, I mean like after work, on the weekends, um, during breaks for school therapists, a lot of times it's during the summer, is it allows you to build your confidence, right? And it being a business owner, it also allows you to build your caseload and start seeing some more clients and build your income and start, you know, making money, but also make sure that you actually like private practice before you quit your job, right? Because I would hate for that, that to happen to anyone, right? So it's like, why not try this and like dip your toe into private practice before, you know, leaping or jumping into anything that you might not like? Yeah, absolutely. Such a good point. Yeah. So that's one way that people are, one of the new ways that people are starting a private practice. Another like old way to do it was to wait for decades to start your private practice, right? That's another thing I thought that, you know, you, you couldn't, or maybe shouldn't start a private practice until you had decades of experience. And again, that's kind of the old way to do it.